So the other day I was scrolling through Instagram and I saw a really cool shader effect that basically creates highlights on objects uh, using shaders instead of actual lighting. Now, most people may be familiar with adding in an area light or a point light and setting it up against an object so that you get this kind of highlighted effect on an object. And uh, yeah, you know, it, it works well for the most part. But it does have uh, some limitations in that it's a little finicky. It's, um, it's a pain to change from time to time unless you have some add-ons. And yeah, it's just annoying sometimes. But I have recreated this shader that I saw. That's going to take us about two minutes to set up. And uh, yeah, it works pretty much on any object. So if I import an asset, for example, I can create this shader very easily. Now, the first method I went through was using cycles and uh, trying to use the geometry pointiness into an emission in order to create you know a, a highlighted effect and as you'll see if I bring this down it sort of works but um, the issue kind of comes into the fact that uh, this is reliant on geometry so the less geometry you have the less uh, high resolution this is going to be it's a little bit heavy on a computer uh, using pointiness so I generally tend to try and avoid it but that was my first idea and as you can see you kind of get these little light highlights around it but I remembered there's another node that you can use that basically highlights all of the edges of an object and that is the Fresnel node now if you've ever made a tune shader then you've probably used the Fresnel node because it's generally used to highlight the outer edges of an object so what we can do to get this to work right off the bat is we can just plug our Fresnel node into our color. And as you'll see, the outer edges get highlighted while the inner edges stay roughly the same. And if we change our IOR, we can kind of change how much of a spread this thing has. Now, instead of changing the IOR, what I'm actually going to do is I'm going to add a map range and make sure to plug it through here. And I'm just going to increase this value to something like 10 and do something like this. We can sharpen it up if we want. Now I'm going to leave it a little bit less sharp, like a 0.02. 0.03 works too. And there we go. Now we've got a nice highlighted thing. And if you want a tune shader, this is pretty much the exact method you can go about to do it. Or you could add in a mixed color node and multiply it, all that stuff. But to uh, make this thing look a lot better, what we're going to do next is we are going to add in a gradient texture. Now, our gradient texture is going to be set to quadratic sphere. That way we have kind of a circle, as you can see, of highlight. What we can then do is press Control T to bring up our mapping coordinates. That is, if you have Node Wrangler enabled, press Control T. We can plug object mode into the vector, and that will center it around the origin of the object. And then, if we want, we can add in an empty and we can use that empty to control the object. So instead of being on the origin of the uh, the object holding the material, it's going to be uh, the object that's selected its origin. So as you can see, if we move that around, it changes uh, where this appears. Now what we want to do is add a mixed color node, set to multiply, and we'll turn the factor all the way up. We're going to plug the gradient into the B slot, and our Fresnel and our map range are going to go into the A slot. And then we're just going to plug that into the color and as you can see, we get this little highlight effect on the side of our object. And one thing that's great is this works in EV as well. So we can just quickly kind of highlight something like this. Now, you'll see it looks a little bit weird. Um, what I might do is plug it into the strength. And then I'm going to plug the base color into the color of the emission. And that way, we're going to get a little bit of the uh, actual color of this object on this so as you can see that looks a lot more natural whenever it uh, collides uh, if we want we can up this a little bit more to make it brighter and I can change it so it's not as sharp and there we go looks good as a highlighter now I'm gonna bring down the strength of the world opacity because it just makes it look that much better and if we want we can change this into a group very simply by just selecting all of these nodes pressing Control G and then we have a quick group. I can change the strength and I can change the sharpness of our lights really quickly. So strength and sharpness. And that way we can just play around with one node and have the strength change. Now, as you'll notice, it goes negative. If you want, you can change the strength and limit it to zero so it can't go negative. And that way, zero is the lowest value. 
And there we go. As you'll see, it looks great in Cycles. Or as you'll see, it looks great in Eevee. And if we jump over to Cycles, it's going to look just as good. And there we go. Now I can just simply highlight something, create some more dramatic lighting using all nodes and not any sort of lights. It's actually very, very nice and very useful. And the best part, because it is shader based. So if I go and add a whole new statue like this one, I can go into the shader editor. I can copy and paste my node group. And if I name it something like highlight and protect it using this little shield, I can actually go in here and add in a node. I can go to groups and grab highlight. And I can just plug this emission into the strength and plug this into the color. And as you'll see, it works just on this object as well. So if you're interested in downloading the node, by the way, you can go to Zach Farmer Art, uh, his Gumroad page. I'll leave a link to it in the description because he's the original creator that I saw this from. There may be some differences between the two because I didn't look on how he made his. So uh, go support him because it's, uh, it's a very cool little thing that you can do. And also, hey, support me as well. You can go follow me on Instagram and YouTube. You can subscribe. Uh, support me on Patreon so that I can keep making videos all the time. And uh, I'll see you guys in the next tutorial. Bye.